Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 27 in the General Class Operator Element 3 exam. In this lesson, we go over the G7B section from the question pool. The G7B section covers digital circuits, specifically gates, flip-flops, and shift resistors, as well as amplifiers and oscillators. Which of the following describes a flip-flop circuit? Well, a flip-flop is a digital circuit with two stable states, and here's what that breaks down to. A flip-flop is a digital circuit, and what this means is that it deals with the binary system of ones and zeros to process information. A one usually indicates the power is being applied to the circuit, and you can think of this as being the power being on, or an on state. The zero usually means that no power is being applied to the circuit, and you can think of this as being an off, or an off state. Now, I say usually because depending on the circuit's programmed, sometimes the 1 may indicate the power off and the 0 could indicate power on, but for the purpose of the exam that's not important. So a flip-flop circuit has two inputs, and they're called the set and the reset, and it has two outputs called the Q and the not Q. So depending on what the binary input is to the set and the reset, the flip-flop will produce a specific or predetermined output through the Q and the not Q. For instance, if the input to the set is a 1 and the input to the reset is a 0, then the Q will be 0. Now the not Q is always opposite of the Q, so you can think of not as being the digital circuit lingo for opposite, so therefore the not Q will be a 1. What the output will be is based on the input and can be determined with the use of a chart called a truth table. So all, you know, whether the set is a 1 or a 0 and the the reset is a 1 or 0. Depending on what combination of 1 and zeros are going into the set and the reset, you can predetermine what the output's going to be in the Q and the not Q. For most digital circuits, we are concerned with only having two or, or having one output. Now flip-flops have two, the Q and the not Q. And these two different outputs is what gives the flip-flop two stable states. Why do digital circuits use the binary number system? Well, the answer is binary ones and zeros are, are easy to represent with an on or off state. So digital circuits use the binary system, ones and zeros, is what we went over in the flip-flop question. A one indicates either on or off, and the zero is the opposite of one. So the binary one zero is easy to represent with an on and off state. What is the output of a two input NAND gate given both inputs are one? The answer is zero, and here's why. A gate is a digital logic integrated circuit, and you have to remember that digital means that we're dealing with the binary system of ones and zeros. So th there are three types of logic functions we need to worry about, and that's not, and, and or, and those are the names of the functions. Not simply produces the opposite binary digit, so if the input into a not function is one, then the output is going to be zero. So basically, if you have a one zero one zero one zero signal, it'll become zero one zero one zero one. So it's the opposite of what, what was the input. And gates have two inputs and one output. So if one of the bi binary signals going to either, either one of the inputs is zero, then the output will be zero. If the signal going to both inputs is a one, then the output is one, and that's predetermined for an AND function. So AND is if there's a zero going into one of the inputs, the output will always be zero. If both inputs are one, then the output will be one. Now, OR is sort of the opposite of an AND gate. If one or both of the inputs receives a 1 signal, then the output will be a 1. If both inputs receive a 0 signal, then the output will be 0. So if one, either one of the inputs is a 1, the output will be 0. If both inputs are 0, then the output will be 0. So it's kind of one of those things you got to remember. A NAND gate is a digital logic integrated circuit which combines the AND and the NOT functions. So if both inputs into an AND function are 1, then the output will be 1. The NOT function simply inverts the AND function and makes it the opposite signal, which is 0. So essentially, it, it, whatever input into the AND inputs is, the NOT function of that circuit will basically invert it. So it'll be the opposite of whatever the AND function would have produced. What is the output of a NOR gate given that both inputs are 0? And the answer is 1, and it's the same idea as the last question. A NOR gate is the combination of the OR and NOT logic functions. So if the two signal inputs into an OR gate are both 0, then the output will be 0. 
The not function then kicks it in and inverts the zero to become a one. So you have an or function which both inputs are zero, the output's going to be zero. The not function reverses it, making it a one. How many states are there in a three bit binary counter? The answer is eight. And what this question is asking is how many different configurations of ones and zeros can you make if you only had three digits to work with? So one, 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 zero, 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 one, zero, one, 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 zero, et cetera. So there's a simple formula to figure this out. So, and that's two to the nth, where n equals the number of bits. So the question is asking about three bits. So how many configurations of ones and zeros can we make if we had three bits or three digits? So the formula is two to the third, three, the n being three. So two to the third, which is equal to two times two times two, which is equal to eight. What is a shift register? Well, a shift register is a clocked array of circuits that passes data in steps along the array. And this is a little bit different, or difficult to understand, rather. Uh, a shift register is essentially an array of flip-flops, which is used as a way of storing binary information. So the shift is the movement of a binary signal down the chain of flip-flops, which occurs with a clock signal, and it's produced by an oscillator or wherever. So if you've ever seen an LED sign that kind of scrolls the news across it, it's kind of the same idea, but it's a different purpose and has, you know, um, it, it's different. If you can remember that a shift register is a digital circuit, that eliminates half the answers on the exam. The keywords in the answer are clocked array. So basically, every tick of a clock, each one of those flip-flops then passes its information to the next flip-flop, and you get kind of this scrolling effect of binary information. What is the basic component of virtually all oscillators? And virtually all oscillators consist of a filter and an amplifier acting in a feedback loop, or operating in a feedback loop. And the way to remember this one is you need to think of a microphone giving feedback over a loudspeaker system. And this feedback is a type of oscillation. In fact, it's almost exactly the same type of oscillation you get in, in a circuit, except you want the stuff in the circuit. Feedback in a sound system is caused when the output from the speakers is fed back into the system through the microphone. So the information is getting looped through the system over and over again, and this, over, this looping over and over again is oscillation. Now, oscillation is bad for the sound system, but like I was saying, it's important for electronics in general. So what you're looking for is a filter and an amplifier that are operating in a feedback loop. And remember that feedback loop. What determines the frequency of an RC oscillator? All right, the answer to this, and I'm a big fan of this question, the, the answer to this one is the phase shift of the RC feedback circuit. And this is a tough one, and, and like I said, may not be a very great question. The easiest way to get the correct answer is to memorize that RC oscillators are sometimes called phase shift oscillators, and where you have the, the shifting phase. Now, RC means the oscillator consists of networks of resistors and capacitors. So there are no inductors, which knocks out one of the, the possible answers. So RC, resistors, capacitors. Now, an, an oscillator produces an AC sine wave. And in an RC oscillator, each resistor capacitor network shifts the start of the sine wave a little to the right. So it's shifting it to the right. Ideally, you need enough RC networks to shift the sine wave 180 degrees. The shifted sine wave is the product of the oscillator. So the actual frequency is determined by the values of the resistors and the capacitors in the oscillator. Not too sure what this question was talking about, but it wants to talk about the phase shift determining the frequency. What determines the frequency of an LC oscillator? Well, this was a little bit easier than the last one. The inductance and the capacitance in the tank circuit determine the, L the frequency of an LC oscillator. So LC oscillators have an inductor, which is the L, and the capacitor, which is the C, and their values, those values of the inductance and the capacitance determine the oscillator's frequency, and there's a formula that there's out, that's out there that you can use to figure this out. It's not important for the exam, but it's, it's good to know that there's some logical thing you can plug the values of the capacitors and the inductors into and get the, the resonant frequency of the oscillator. Which of the following is a characteristic of a class A amplifier? And the answer is low distortion. And for the purpose of the exam, this might be one to memorize advice to get the theory. But there are several different classes of amplifier. You got A, you got B, C, D. There's a combination of A and B called A, B, et cetera. And the class of amplifier is determined by what part of the signal sine wave the amplifier will conduct in. So the class A amplifiers conduct the entire 360 degrees of the signal or the sine wave it receives. 
and this is because the power class A amplifiers have additional power added to them and does never turns off at any time so there's very little distortion from the amplifier turning on and off and delays and all that stuff because the amplifier must be driven the power with power the entire time it is operating the class A amplifiers consume a lot of power and are not efficient which is a big disadvantage but the big advantage of a class A amplifier because of this constant driving of power and it never shuts off and it, there's no delays in it it's at very very low distortion for which of the following modes is a class C power stage appropriate for amplifying a modulated signal and of the possible answers the correct one is CW and this just for ease of passing the exam uh, this is one that's probably pretty easy to memorize you got a class C amplifier you, it modulates CW pretty well now what this question is getting at is that there for different amplifier classes there are different modes you can use for instance uh, class A amp conducts during the entire time we talked about low distortion um, in, a, in a class A amplifier the a class A amplifier is a linear amplifier and therefore it can amplify amplitude modulated signals which require the in output waveform to be exactly the same as the input waveform except the output waveform is louder now class C amplifiers conduct for less than half the the sine wave cycle so the signal si wave cycle it only uses less than half of that cycle um, since they're not driven like the class A amps they only conduct when the AC cycle is going in their bias direction think back to the semiconductors and transistors uh, that you know the transistor has a bias direction it works in but not the entire it, it works not the entire time the signal is going in the right direction so basically there is a point where the sine wave comes above the, the zero x-axis and once power reaches a certain level then the amplifier will kick on and when it goes below that level it'll kick back off so the advantage of this is that they're extremely efficient the disadvantage is that their distortion is very high so this high distortion is okay for CW signals when you're not worried about the signal being when you're only worried about the signal being on or off but AM single sideband where the amplitude of the wave is modulated they don't work at well at all so class C CW which of the following is an advantage of a Class C amplifier? High efficiency. And we talked about this in the last question. Class C amplifiers are extremely efficient. They don't use very much energy at all. How is the efficiency of an RF power amplifier determined? Well, the answer is you divide the RF output power by the DC input power. So th this goes, we were talking about efficiency in the last couple questions. So what we're talking about in this question is an RF power amplifier. So the output is going to be RF. So remember that, and that'll help you get the right answer on the, the exam. Now, amplifiers are powered, and that's the DC input power that's basically helping the, the amplifier amplify the signal. So it's simple enough. You just d divide the power going out by the power going in. And if you remember that we're looking at an RF power amplifier, so you're looking for RF as the output. Which of the following describes a linear amplifier? All right, a linear amplifier is an amplifier whose output preserves the input waveform. So essentially, the amplifier produces the same wave shape that was in the input, just it's bigger coming in out of the output. So for amplitude modulated signals like AM and single sideband, this is linearity is is a very big deal. It's not so much a big deal for CW and FM signals. It's also important to note that the more linear the amplifier the less efficient it actually is so class A amplifier is a linear amplifier very inefficient class C not a linear amplifier much more efficient and that's the end of the G7B review and now it's time for the G7B quiz so take out a piece of paper and a pencil and number 1 through 14 when you're done with the quiz, you can check your answers at hamwhisper.com. You can find them under the exam answers page under the G7B section of questions. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick, so if you need more time, pause the video and take all the time you need. And now that, that that's out of the way, let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. Which of the following describes a flip-flop circuit? A. A transmit-receive circuit. B. A digital circuit with two stable states. C. An RF limiter. Or D. A voice operated switch. Question 2. Why do digital circuits use the binary number system? A. 
binary ones and zeros are easy to represent with an on or off state. B, the binary number system is most accurate. C, binary numbers are more compatible with analog circuitry. Or D, all of these answers are correct. Question three, what is the output of a two input NAND gate given both inputs are one? A, two, B, one, C, zero, or D, minus one? Question four, what is the output of a NOR gate given that both inputs are zero? A, zero, B, one, C, minus one, or D, the opposite from the previous state? Question five, how many states are there in a three-bit binary counter? A, three, B, six, C, eight, or D, 16? Question six, what is a shift register? A, a clocked array of circuits that passes data in steps along their array. B, an array of operational amplifiers used for tri-state arithmetic operations. C, a digital mixer, or D, an analog mixer. Question seven, what are the basic components of virtually all oscillators? A, an amplifier and a divider. B, a frequency multiplier and a mixer. C, a circulator with a filter operating in a feed forward loop. Or D, a filter and an amplifier operating in a feedback loop. Question eight, what determines the frequency of an RC oscillator? A, the ratio of the capacitors in the feedback loop. B, the value of the inductor in the tank circuit. C, the phase shift of the RC feedback circuit, or D, the gain of the amplifier. Question nine, what determines the frequency of an LC oscillator? A, the number of stages in the counter. B, the number of stages in the divider. C, the inductance and capacitance in the tank circuit, or D, the time delay of the lag circuit. Question 10, which of the following is a characteristic of a class A amplifier? A low standby power, B, high efficiency, C, no need for bias, or D, low distortion. Question 11. For which of the following modes is a class C power stage appropriate for amplifying a modulated signal? A, single sideband, B, CW, C, AM, or D, all of these answers are correct. Question 12. Which of the following is an advantage of a class C amplifier? A, high efficiency, B, linear operation, C, no need for tuned circuits, or D, all of these answers are correct. Question 13, how is the efficiency of an RF power amplifier determined? A, divide the DC input power by the DC output power. B, divide the RF output power by the DC input power. C, multiply the RF input power by the reciprocal of the RF output power, or D, add the RF input power in to the DC output power. Question 14, which of the following describes a linear amplifier? A, any RF power amplifier used in conjunction with an amateur transceiver. B, an amplifier whose output preserves the input waveform. C, a class C high efficiency amplifier or D, an amplifier used as a frequency multiplier. And that's it for lesson 27 and the G7B questions. Now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com, check out the, your answers under the exam answers page. You can find it under the G7B section of questions. And until next time and lesson 28, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.